Hi. Today I'm building a second prototype of my 8-bit computer, so I can try out a few things without destroying the first model. But this time I'm going to show you all the important steps in doing so. So first I take one of these adapter boards and solder the Easy 80 on there. The problem with the Easy 80 is that it only comes in a fine pitch SMD package. I use one of these wristbands connected to ground to avoid electrostatic discharge while handling microchips. I ordered these parts from DigiKey and they come in a static shielding bag and if you cut open the bag you will find inside not only the chips but also a humidity indicator. That's because these devices are also sensitive to humidity but that's not important when you're hand soldering them. That's only important when you do a reflow process. So now let me take one out of here. So here's the chip and as you can see it has a lot of tiny pins very close to each other. So soldering these is not easy but there are two things that make it much easier. The first is very thin solder get and uh, as thin as you can get it. And the second most important thing when soldering these or when soldering general is flux. I'm using this kind of flux. It is made from tree resin. It's a German kind of thing. It says Löthonig, which means soldering honey. But I can reassure you it does not taste or smell like honey. It also comes in these kinds of containers. But be careful to get acid-free flux made for electronics, not the stuff made for copper pipes. When putting the chip on the board, it may help to add a little glue, like I did here. But be sure to look at the dot on the silk screen and put the chip in the right way so that a dot on the chip corresponds with the dot on the silk screen. And then well, just align all these tiny pins so that they all look centered. And using tweezers might help. And if you think you got it all right, you can just wait a little and let the glue dry and the chip won't move when you go ahead and solder it. First you tack down the corners, because once you got the corners down, the chip won't go anywhere. The important thing is to add heat to both the lead and the pad, or else you won't get a physical connection. At this point it doesn't matter if you get a few pins shorted, we can fix that later. The important thing is to really get the chip down so it won't move anymore. Like here, I forgot to add heat to the pad so it didn't connect, but now it's tacked down. Now for actually soldering the chip. Obviously you have to do this for all four sides and I'm showing you my best shot here. The first two didn't go too well so this is the third time I'm trying to do this. So first you add flux and distribute it over the pins. You can't really use too much. Well if you don't see the chip anymore that's too much flux but as long as well as long as it's not getting in the way okay. So you first add a ball of solder on one end and then slowly drag it across all the pins and as you go along the ball of solder should follow you and make a connection with each pin. You see I lost it there. So the problem here is that I made the ball too big in the beginning so I have shorted a, a row of pins there and also in the end I got some left over which I tried to distribute by going back but that didn't work all too well. So if you got too much solder on there it's not a big deal. You can always remove it with some solder wick which will come in soon here. So this is just braided copper and with some flux already on it but adding extra flux always helps with this. And you just put it down and apply heat. Don't move or drag this. It would, it will break or bend the leads on the chip. Just 
put it down, add a little pressure, don't move or drag this. And using this method you can remove excess sort of from your joint. When doing this it might accidentally happen that you disconnect the lead from the pad again and if that happens there should still be enough solder on there you just have to go in and reheat the joint so it connects again so this is what it looks like when you do that and if there are any unconnected you will find them later in testing and this is what it should look like after soldering You then remove the flux using some flux remover. This could take some time depending on the amount of flux you use. And once you're all done, you can go ahead and test if all the connections are right and if you have in fact removed all the shorts that you may have had. First you can check for shorts using your multimeter and you just go along the connector pads on the edge of the board and test all the neighboring pins for continuity and there should be no beeps. None of these neighboring ones should be connected to each other. The second thing to test for is whether every signal actually gets through all the way to the lead on the chip. So with one probe on the outside connector and one probe on the chip lead you should get a beep for every single one. Here are some close-up shots of the solder joints that I made. I think it's not looking all too bad. And next time we will have a look at how to apply power to this chip and the decoupling capacitors that are required for that. Until then, thank you for watching this video and bye bye.